The more tables you join, the more fields you see in your result set. Oftentimes, when you get too many fields, it's best to start itemizing just the ones you're looking for. You're going to find that your select list is going to give way from a select star to an actual select listing of all the fields you want in your report. You've probably also noticed that select is the first line of any query. Select star is easy. Select with an itemized field list only works once you've listed every single table. Here's a quick query writing tip that can save you the years of heartache that I went through before learning this. First step. Always write every query as a select star from until you've completely and successfully joined all the tables you need. Step 2. Once all joins are working, go back and itemize your select list. Let's do this together. Let's start off by looking individually at the two tables we want to join. The first one is employee and the second one is location. Let's look at both tables. Now this is my employee table. This is my location table. These tables have two fields that you can correspond to one another in your join. This field is the employee.location ID field. This field is the location dot location ID field. What we're going to do is we're going to list both tables in the from and both fields in the on. We're going to do select star from and get all the fields. Once that's working, we will itemize all of our fields and get a more focused report. So what I'm going to do is drop this from down a line, put the location in the same line as the from, and say inner join on employee dot location ID equals location dot location ID. Now that the query is running properly, let's focus on just the fields we wanted to see. If the report said show last name, first name, city, and state, we can now itemize our fields safely because we know that all the tables that the fields need are already present in your from and your join. So we will say first name, last name, city, state, and execute. When you do a select star, you are asking for all fields from all tables. We have 11 fields because we're pulling in 7 fields from the employee table and 4 fields from the location table. Notice the location ID field appears to be listed twice. The actuality is the first one is the employee.location ID field. The second one is the location.location ID field. So here's kind of a question. We have a perfectly good running query with just four of the 11 fields, two fields from employee and two fields from location. If I were to simply list location ID, would SQL Server try to pull out the employee.location ID or the latter location.location ID? I haven't specified. Which one does it choose? Well, let's execute. Plain conservative, SQL doesn't want to take any chances with what you meant. It says, hey, I found a location ID field in both tables. You haven't said exactly which one it is. It's ambiguous, so it's not going to run. Let's say that I would like the employee.location ID field. And then the query runs just fine. Sometimes you need to fully qualify your field in the select in the on or even in the where clause. If you wanted to be really explicit, you could qualify every field. This is the employee.firstname field. This is the employee 
dot last name field. This is the location dot city field. This is the location dot state field. And it runs just fine. In most situations, two tables would have maybe one, two, or up to three fields in common, and all the rest of the fields would be uniquely named. Why is it considered a good practice, or a safe practice, to fully qualify every field, even if that field is unique to that table only? Well, as you will learn in Chapter 6, it's possible to add new fields to tables where one didn't exist before. Right now, the location table is the only table that has the state field in it. But state could mean like the state of the employee. For example, are they in a hired state, a fired state, a raised state, a leave of absence state? Well, let me delete location.state and say SQL Server can easily figure out where state comes from. Now, if I go to my employee table, I modify the table and add a brand new field called state, save my changes, and check the table to see that the field is there, we can see that the employee table now has a state field. OK. Now this query, which maybe you built a year ago and has been running every day and has been running fine, all of a sudden it fails. You haven't changed the code of this query, but because it is now ambiguously referenced, the way to fix it is to say this is the location dot state. So as you see, to make your code robust and not fragile to future changes, it's a good idea to fully qualify all the fields you see and reference in your query. But there's a drawback. How many times do I have to type the word employee? That's a lot of typing. Some tables are up to 25 or more letters long. This lab is to show you how to save typing while still giving you the benefits of fully qualifying your fields. Let's go back to writing that query that joined the employee and the location table and just pulled in four fields. Let's go select star from employee, inner, join, location, on employee, dot location, ID equals location dot location ID and execute. Okay, too many fields. Let's pull in first name, last name, city. Nice. What we're going to do now is fully qualify the fields and all the joins and everywhere. Except we don't want to type in employee and location over and over again. What we can do is look at the from clause. The from clause is the core of the query. Whatever you set there dictates how the rest of the query will run. So I'm going to call the employee table E. I'm going to call the location table L. Now we can say in our join that E.location is equal to L.location. And first name is from the E table, last name is from the E table, city is from the L alias, state is from the L alias, and it runs. Now this does not rename your table. Your tables are still called employee and location. For the sake of this query and all of the typings, like where L dot city equals Seattle, for the sake of repeatedly referencing fully qualified fields in your select, in your on, in your where, and other clauses that would need these fields, you can now save a significant amount of typing. That finishes up Lab 4.1 on table aliasing. Next up, let's see what you can do with it on the Lab 4.1 Points to Ponder.